The gentlewoman from Missouri, Mrs. Wagner, is now recognized for five minutes. I thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Chair Powell, uh, thank you for joining us uh, again today. I, I just want to start by saying how sick and tired I am of the president's inflation blame game. One day it's Putin's fault, another it's the oil companies and the meat packers, or perhaps it's corporate greed. Um, now we're blaming other countries like Estonia, Turkey, Europe. I give you an, my, my, my avid assurance that no one in Missouri's second congressional district give us a rip what the price of gas and groceries are in Europe. They care about what they are at the corner of Manchester Road and Weidman. Uh, no one in this administration is willing to accept responsibility for the dismal economic situation America is in today. Inflation, sir, more than tripled in 2021, from 1.4 to 7%. And from June to the end of September 2021, Inflation hovered, I think, around 5.4%, and then began a steady increase until reaching an historic 8.6% that is now crippling Americans' spending power today. Chair Powell, when inflation remained steady at 5.4% during that period in 2021, what factors played into the Fed's decision to keep rates at nearly zero during each FOMC meeting in June, in July, and in September of 2021, sir? So during the summer of 2021, uh, just giving us hindsight, uh, inflation was coming down month by month. If you look at month monthly readings for CPI or PCE, they were coming down month on month on month through September. And so that, that I think, uh, told us that our thesis that this was going to be a passing inflation shock was, was at least plausible. I think that the data turned pretty hard in October and November, and we very much changed our position, and since then have tightened financial conditions quite significantly. So it was a matter of a few months when we were, we were really looking at this and thinking it's going to be passing. Most macroeconomists thought that it would be a, a passing thing. It turned out to not have been so far, and so. But it, we saw it move from 1.4 percent to 5.4 percent. So I don't, you know, we did have a steady period of time. I wouldn't say that it was declining, uh, but I'm just surprised that we weren't moving more quickly at the Fed. I mean, I, I want to be honest, sir. That the Fed, I think, underestimated actual inflation. What do you What do you think you missed? Well, we did underestimate it. it with the benefit of hindsight, clearly we did. So it comes down to this judgment that we had to make. make. It has really nothing to do with our framework or anything like that. It was, it, and every, every central bank had to make the same judgment, which was looking at the supply chain problems and, you know, the shock to labor, part, partic labor force participation, millions of people out of the labor force. We had to decide whether that was going to be a lasting thing or whether it would kind of turn around quickly. You know, we had very high levels of labor force participation. Suddenly they're much lower. The thought was people will come back as soon as COVID is over. We have these new vaccines. They're going to, every American is going to get vaccinated. We'll be done with COVID by the end of the year. So basically, these supply side issues, broadly speaking, just didn't get better. There were, there were recurring waves. Yeah. And that, that was the judgment we had to make. We knew it could be wrong. And I think when it started to look pretty wrong, we, moved, we pivoted. And now, we, President we Biden continues. Like seven months ago. President Biden continues to say that a recession is, is not inevitable. Uh, as he, his government agencies, and Dems in Congress continue to spend billions and trillions of taxpayer dollars, burden businesses with costly rules and regulations, and on top of it, the president refuses to unleash American energy independence. Uh, the president's policies continue to take inflation-taming options, I think, off the table and hamstring the Fed's ability to focus on price stability. President Biden not only limits the energy production here in America and spends trillions of our taxpayers' money, but he also threatens tax increases and promises to cancel billions in debt. How can you still say, sir, that the Fed has a pathway to a soft landing for the economy? Well, it, uh, that's our, our intention is to achieve uh, inflation getting back to 2% 
and uh, with, with all I've laid out, the strong labor market. I'm sorry. With all I've laid out and the increases you're going to have to take. So I, as as I mentioned, I think that that path has gotten more and more challenging, thanks to you know the the effects on oil prices and food prices, really, and, and also the supply chains from the from the war in Ukraine. It was never going. We never Not said it was going to be Not just the war in easy. Ukraine, sir. Well, it's the it's the, the rise in energy prices and the rise in which has been you know began in Feb the, the the latest rise from February. The latest now. rise. This has been going on for a year and a half. I appreciate the chair's indulgence. I will yield back uh, the balance of my time. Thank you, Chairman Powell. The gentleman from.